The Colts are on the board. They brought back a couple of their own players today, as well as a mountainous player from the outside. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Thanks for tuning in and making us your last listen of the day, I guess. Uh, This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers, you guys get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. What's up, everybody? Jake Arthur and Zach Hicks coming to you live today uh, in the evening and live because, as we know, if Zach and I are doing something, news will break. So we figure we might as well be live here with you guys, and maybe you can tell us if something starts popping off uh, Colts-related while we're in here. I got my trusty phone, so you'll hear a little bit of buzzing, I'm sure. Uh, but we got some some more Colts news today. So uh, they continue to invest in their own very heavily. Uh, Kenny Moore and Rigoberto Sanchez were brought back today, and they are finally on the board with someone from the outside. That's right. They grabbed uh, Raquan Davis, defensive tackle from the Miami Dolphins. Um, on paper so far, what's been reported, a, a pretty healthy deal for him. Uh, but overall, that's someone else from the outside. Uh, they're, they're starting to make moves, and it's everyone wants it to happen sooner, but let's be honest, we're not even out of the, the legal tampering period yet. So Colts are, Colts are doing a little something here. Uh, so Zach, let's talk about it. Kenny Moore, that was, he was probably in our top three of guys they had to bring back. And so they've done it. And there's really only like one guy left at this point, Julian Blackman, who was a, you know, must resign that they haven't yet. So, so far so good. Yeah, I and mean, honestly, I don't even know if I'd put Julian Blackman in the same tier as Kenny Moore the second was, uh, as Grover not, not Stewart. The same, but yeah. No, no, it's like just below it for sure. But mm-hmm. uh, Julian Blackman, I think, you know, if he ends up leaving and they end up finding another veteran safety, that's more excusable than if Kenny were to leave and they had to find a new nickel corner. Because I think the one thing that's kind of not talked about enough when it comes to the Colts free agent signings, you know, a lot of their in-house guys they brought in is – Imagine they lost Grover Stewart. Imagine they lost Michael Pittman Jr. Imagine they lost Kenny Moore the second, right? You'd have to replace those three guys and all the snaps that they had on your team. And I know a lot of people want to say, oh, look, we didn't make the playoffs last year. Therefore, nobody should come back and we should just, you know, get new players. But the thing is, if if Kenny and Grover and and Pittman Jr. all left this offseason, Pittman would have been the highest receiver on the market, highest paid receiver on the market. Grover would have been one of the higher paid one techs in on the market. Kenny would have been the highest paid slot corner on the market. So it's like, look, these guys were going to get paid. They're going to be the best options available in free agency. So getting these guys back, I think was paramount, uh, especially again, Kenny and Grover. I mean, what would this defense look like without those two guys in there? Uh, so getting those guys back was big. Uh, Kenny, I know, you know, you guys have to keep in mind with the with the agent tweets that are going out there. Agents are sending the numbers to the Schefters and the Rappaports of the world. So when you're seeing three years, 30 million, highest paid uh, slot corner uh, in NFL history, the real contract's going to be something like three years, like 20 million, you know, or two years, like 15 million. If you actually look at at the guaranteed money and stuff like that, so. Uh, you know, it's it's not exactly the way that <laughs> that the contracts are built out. We're going to talk about it with Raquan Davis as well. Uh, I saw two years, the 14 million. There's no chance it's two years, 14 million. It's going to be more like two years, like six or seven million when it comes to the guarantees. But no, I love them. I love the move to get, bring back Kenny Moore again. You weren't going to find a better option on the market. I mean, honestly, the only way you really could have replaced him is if you spent like a first round pick on like Cooper DeGene. Uh, So getting Kenny back, I think makes a lot of sense. Big time playmaker had a really good year last year uh, and did a lot of good things. So yeah, I'm glad to have Kenny back. You guys know I'm a huge Kenny Moore fan. So having him back in the fold is a great thing here. Yeah. And that's, I think we still are in the same boat where they still need to add someone else. They just needed to make sure Kenny was still on board. Right. Uh, but no, this, this is huge. I mean, 
uh, twice in a row now they've made him, you know, at least again on paper, the highest paid nickel with his last two contracts. So, I mean, that's a guy who very much values loyalty and stability and they've, so they've done right by him. And, you know, just this time last year, we didn't even know if, if Kenny was going to be on the team. Uh, so this was really good. He kind of had a career renaissance in this last season and looked like himself again. Uh, again, he always, uh, there's some times where he just looks a step ahead of the competition and uh, they, they've got that player for at least a few more years now. Rigoberto Sanchez, I mean, I don't want to completely gloss over it, but uh, I, I had to do a little bit of uh, explanation on Twitter earlier. I know some people, you know, he was maybe a little more inconsistent than we're used to last year, but still highest net average of his career, zero touchbacks was the only punter in the NFL to do that. And I, I've always mentioned he is a punter that's not like a power punter. He's part of a team. He works very well with his gunners. So not having Ashton Doolin and Daniel Scott and guys like that last year. I mean, he hadn't worked with Daniel Scott yet, but he was going to factor into special teams pretty heavily. Uh, Dallas Flowers, not having those guys affected things and affected the plans. And plus, how many guys, especially defensive backs, did we see that were hurt that had to play a lot of defensive snaps rather than special teams? So yeah, hopefully he's going to have his crew back uh, next year, and that'll make him look even better. But I think it's a big deal to have him back. Yeah, I mean, look, I can't really go too much into uh, <laughs> into punter stuff, but uh, just having that punter position locked down, having a guy that's been around and a guy who had a you know a solid season last year. Look, it's better than Matt Hack. It's better than Mac Hack. That's all yes. I can really say there. Uh, but one more guy we need to talk about before we get out of segment one here is the the new outside free agent mm-hmm. signing that is Raquan Davis. Now, look, this sign, this signing right here is an A plus to me, purely for the fact that I don't have to watch Taven Bryan play one tech anymore. Like, I- I'm not saying Raquan Davis is some perfect nose tackle. You know, I watched his film. He's not the athlete that Grover Stewart is. He's not the, as strong as Grover Stewart. He's not as flexible as Grover Stewart is by any means, but he's a big, lengthy defensive tackle who can get off blocks, who can eat space, and that's all I need. That's all I need. All I need is a guy who can actually stand his ground and eat up blocks and occasionally shed the blocks. That's all I need. I don't need anything else from my backup one tech, my backup nose tackle, backup defensive tackle. Um, so the fact that I don't have to watch, you know, we, we had Adetomi playing nose tackle at times last year against the Rams and, and in some other games. We had uh, Taven, Brian and Eric Johnson being driven 30 yards off the ball every single time. So just getting Raekwon Davis, you know, a guy who can actually stand his ground there on, on the defensive line. This is such a big signing because honestly, the, 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 the most frustrating thing in history last year, you know, when we're looking at that season, the biggest like, like hole in the side of the defense that was sinking that entire defensive ship was every time one of Grover or Buckner came off the field, the Colts run defense was going to be pitiful, pitiful. It was going to be the worst run defense in football. So getting a guy like Raquan Davis, who, is not perfect. Like Raekwon Davis is not some, some great, you know, needle mover by any means, but just getting a guy who can play football, who can go on the field and actually play football. This is a big upgrade. You know, I'm again, I I don't want to be hyperbolic here and just say like, Oh my gosh, the Colts are going to win it all now, but they can actually take Grover and Buckner off the field on rundowns this year. That's a major win for me. They can actually take these guys off the field and give them breaks because last year, if they did it, you know, the whole defense was going to corrode to nothing. Yeah, this is this is a big one. It, it really is. And again, it's not significant in terms of like the production. But like you said, it gives you a capable body there. And, you know, that means with now Adetomi, you can play him where you want. He can be a backup three tech, hopefully takes that next step and gets there. Uh, but now you're not going to have guys playing out of position necessarily. And again, he doesn't have to get penetration. He just has to not get bullied and pushed around and at six seven three twenty five i'm fairly confident that he'll be able to, to anchor in and play just fine i mean he lasted all four years in miami so it's he's not a guy that's bounced around a ton already so um i'm gonna give us a check mark for this one because he was on our one text to watch for i think we've mentioned him a, a time or two since the offseason so Big one for the brand today, not going to lie. Um, I'll be honest, I'd love to tell you guys how much cap space the Colts have right now. But last I looked was $36 million as of like 430 and it still says that, uh, according to over the cap. So it's going to be less than that. 
Uh, there's still there's still some wiggle room. I'm sure they can work with that. Have you heard anything different? No, I mean, I don't think it's going to be as low as what people think uh, because the way these deals are structured mm -hmm. um, and once the Michael Pittman Jr. extension comes in, that'll that will give them more space because of the way extensions work. So, yeah, I think they'll have somewhere between 25 to 30 million to work with still, which is That's, yeah. more than enough, more than enough. Yeah, I was kind of thinking it would be around that 30 mark or so because it hasn't been updated in a little bit, but yeah. there, there's there's still some some stuff to play with there. Uh, so coming up here in a minute, we're going to talk about uh, maybe some bigger fish where there's still some rumors out there and whether or not it's possible and uh, basically what it says about the Colts and their relationship to these players. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. All right, so we've uh, started to hear some interesting things in the last day or two. Uh, we'll just lead off with the Legereus Sneed thing because I think that's still alive. That's something we've, you know, we've let a show off with it uh, th at this point. Uh, so the Colts and the potential to trade for uh, a big time starting corner like Legereus Sneed, uh, that that seems to still be a possibility. Uh, you know, rumor has it that's still something that they're looking into, uh, but. You know, Stephen Holder from ESPN even put out there that the Colts had been in talks with uh, Daniel Hunter, four-time Pro Bowler from the from the Vikings. Uh, very, very interesting. I didn't know they were they were going for that big of a swing at a position where they didn't really need a player of that impact. Uh, I know we mentioned him, I think, last week on one of the shows, but that was like kind of a far out thing, something they could do, but wouldn't likely do. Uh, he wound up landing with the uh, the Texans. That's a projected two years, 49 million uh, or 48 million guaranteed. Uh, and then a really interesting one. This one was uh, from Benjamin Albright, who does he does get stuff correct with the Colts more often than not. Uh, but his guess for where Justin Fields might land, uh, he said a couple times that the Colts and Eagles were possibilities uh, for Justin Fields. Uh, it being a good situation for Fields to come to Indy and back up Anthony Richardson and learn from Shane Steichen. Uh, so I know that's a lot I just threw at you, Zach, but give me the rundown. What are you feeling on all these? Uh, yeah, let's start with the Neil Hunter because that was the fun one. That was the fun <laughs> one where uh, when uh, I mean, look, we love Stephen Holder. I mean, I'm not this is not me throwing anything at him by any means. But when he tweeted that, I was like, oh, man, you can't throw this to them. Here we you go. <laughs> you can't throw them this kind of bone, Stephen, because, you know, the Colts are not going to sign him. And then it's going to be just, you know, helter skelter when it comes to uh, Colts Twitter the rest of the day. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, look. Daniel Hunter was always likely going to go to Houston. He's from Houston. Houston has a ton of cap space. They wanted to make that big splash. Even if the Colts were going to match that offer, Hunter was still going to take the Houston deal because of that cap or because of uh, that being his hometown team. You know, if all things are even, he wanted to go to Houston. Uh, so I didn't really see it as much of a possibility, especially because the Colts were a little bit lower on cap space than the Texans as well. The Texans could have gone over them. Uh, if they needed to. So, yeah, I never really saw the Colts as really much of an option for Dale Hunter. I'm sure they did call and just check in on the price, but I don't know how serious it got. But I mean, look, two years, 48 million guaranteed. That's just not a deal that Chris Ballard typically gives out. You know, he mm -hmm. doesn't give out fully guaranteed deals. He doesn't give a lot of backloaded type deals, which we might see happen there. Uh, so, yeah, it just wasn't something that was going to happen for the Colts. And look, if we're looking at where this Colts team needs to improve, a Daniel Hunter would be great. Daniel Hunter is a really good player, uh, but a guy who, what, is 29 years old, edge rusher, mm -hmm. two-year deal is, is not too bad, but it's just you have other guys on the roster who are good edge rush. They're not as good as Daniel Hunter, but you have a good edge rush right now. Like It's not this major, major thing that needs to happen, and throwing $20-plus million a year at that position when you already have capable guys. I don't know. Like I, I get it. I get it. I get wanting that star player, but – you know, at the end of the day, he was going to pick Houston almost regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, I don't know why 
I, I mean, I, I guess I know why Stephen Holder put it out there because it is something that happened. But it's like, look, it wasn't going to actually happen. <laughs> you know, the Colts, Colts weren't going to sign him. Uh, now, the more realistic option, again, still remains trading for cornerback Legarius Sneed. Uh, we haven't had too many more updates regarding that when it comes to the Chiefs and the Colts talking. Obviously, the Chiefs are going to take this as far as they can because, look, at the end of the day, the Chiefs can go – super super far with this and still get a good return they can go until a team gets desperate or misses out on other corners and try to get as much return as possible but i do think eventually the chiefs are going to have to realize that they're not going to get much more than the equivalent of a middle second round pick i'm not saying that the colts are offering 46 straight up for them but i do i don't think it's going to be anything more than you know, a third and a fourth or pick 46. You know, they're mm -hmm. not going to get a first rounder for LeJarius Sneed. Even if, if that's what they're holding out for, they're not going to get that for LeJarius Sneed. And they're starting to see their suitors, you know, like the Detroit Lions were a team that uh, was was really interested in LeJarius Sneed. They're really in those talks, uh, but they have just signed two corners already in free agency. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be, or they they traded for one, they signed another one. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think Legarius needs still gets moved. I know this person mentioned here that Mahomes restructured his contract, creating $22 million in space. Uh, they need do, to do that to be cap compliant uh, in, in the first place, but also they have other moves they're going to make. So that that $22 million in space uh, was not really necessarily, oh, Legarius Sneed is staying in Kansas City. I think I do think Sneed eventually does get moved, and I do think the Colts are going to be in that until the end. I just don't know how it's going to uh, to end up there. But, uh, yeah, I do think the Colts are going to be in it. I do think eventually he's going to get moved for the equivalence of a middle second round pick. We just don't have too many updates right now because there's no rush on the Chiefs' side. There's no rush on the Chiefs' side at this moment to get that deal done. They can hold out as long as they want. Uh, for the last thing you mentioned there, though, Justin Fields to Indy as the backup. Now, I believe he's going to be making $6 million this year because he was he's still on that rookie contract uh, higher up in the – you know, in the first round is around $6 million is what he's going to be making. I'm intrigued by it. Uh, I don't really care too much for a backup quarterback. I mean, I know it, it came big time last year with, with Gardner Minshew, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I would trade anything significant. I think that's what the bears are holding out for. I don't know why the Colts would trade something significant, but look, if they're just trying to dump him for free for, you know, a day three pick swap or something. Sure. I will gladly take Justin Fields at that, but if it's anything more, like if they want like a third round pick for him, that that doesn't intrigue me at all. I'd rather just go get a Tyler Huntley or draft a guy on day three or something like that on a cheaper contract. Uh, because mm -hmm. look, at the end of the day, I kind of subscribe to the Bill Polian type of way, or the not the Bill Polian, the, the Tom Moore type of way with backup quarterback, where it's like, look, if our guy's out, we're we're kind of screwed anyway. <laughs> so it's hey, that's not it, what he said. It, you know, it, it kind of is show. like that, but uh, yeah, you know, it, it's um, I don't know. I, I I think Justin Fields would make sense if the Bears were just trying to dump him. But mm -hmm. if they actually want a real return, I don't think the Colts make sense as a trade partner, if that makes sense there. Yeah, I I could see the Colts in Chicago being a universe apart in asking price because I yeah. don't I think the Colts would, you know, probably like a fourth rounder max, like a conditional third or something. But I'm sure Chicago is like, look, we're only getting rid of this guy because Caleb Williams is right here. And they right. probably want, you know, something early. And I, I, it just seems unlikely to me because I just don't see a common ground there of, of asking price. If you're Maybe the bears, if you're the bears, just hold him until the draft. Mm -hmm. draft Caleb Williams, start Caleb Williams. And then when we have that inevitable quarterback injury in week one or week two, trade him then. That's when you're going to get more of a return than what you're going to get right now when nobody wants him and everybody has mm -hmm. their quarterback. So, yeah, I, I don't think the Colts are going to realistically get Justin Fields. I, I love the thought of it. It sounds fun, like really fun mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're just giving him away. But I don't think they're just going to give him away. Just wait until, again, there's going to be inevitable quarterback injury in week one or week two next year. Just trade him then, and you might get a day two pick out of it. That's where I'm at. I, I do think it sounds fun because I think they could run the hell out of him, and I, I think they could do some nice things passing, at least downfield maybe. I, he's obviously not a consistent passer. But, again, you have faith in a guy like Shane Steichen to get the most out of someone. But, yeah, th those are those are things that are probably uh, not going to happen, but they're nice to think about. I mean, the Sneed thing could. That's the that's the most likely of all that. 
Uh, but then we're going to finish things out here in a moment with yeah. who's still out there. What do we want to see the Colts do and who makes the most sense still? But first, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? Would you show up for a friend? A lot of us spend our time wishing we had more time. Uh, the question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I know uh, for a lot of you guys, your favorite thing right now is not Chris Ballard. So maybe go to therapy really talk it out and say, you know what? I don't need to live my life defined by Chris Ballard's free agency moves before free agency officially starts. You know, that's what therapy is for. And look, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. All right, my crazy Locked On Colts fans. Actually, you guys have been pretty tame in the comment section tonight. I'm actually pretty happy. Pretty let's proud throw a of you fire guys. in there. Let's let's no get no <laughs> no. I'm I'm proud of them tonight. These guys are doing great. There. I mean, look, I, I I get being frustrated. Frustrated. Like there there are people in there who are frustrated. I totally get it. It it's tough seeing your division rival who just beat you to make the playoffs sign a big fish like Daniel Hunter. So I totally get being frustrated. Uh, but look, you guys are being nice tonight. I, I really like that. Um. We're looking at the next wave of free agents. The, I mean, again, free agency hasn't even officially started yet. The new league year kicks off tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and that's when these deals can officially be agreed upon and signed. Um, and, and look, if you're looking at the two things that the Colts need the most right now, safety and cornerback, there's still a lot of names out there that make sense for the Colts and make the Colts a better team. So I, I don't think we need to be all doom and gloomy here about free agency when Again, we're technically not even one day into free agency because it starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. And there's still a lot of guys out there. I mean, I have the safety list and the cornerback list right in front of me here, Jake. All these guys would be improvements or just interesting ads to the Colts. Uh, and they're still out there. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm not at the point where I'm standing at the edge of the, you know, on the ledge and and screaming, help me, Ballard. You know, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. There are still a lot of guys out there who could help this team. And, and I like some of the names I see. Oh yeah. The shopping list is still real healthy looking like there's not been a lot of guys that have come off the board where you, where you say, Oh, this diminishes the whole thing. I mean, just safety, whether you want free or strong, you know, Jamal Adams, Justin Simmons, Quandre Diggs, there's a ton of guys here, an underrated guy like Cam Curl. And Oh yeah. The guy we already know, Julian Blackman. Um, yeah. At this point, I think a lot of us want Julian Blackman back, but it almost seems like a consolation prize with, how much is still out there? Like the safety market is pretty crazy. Uh, I, I mean, I know everyone wanted Chen. Uh, he went, shoot, where did he go? Washington. Washington. Think of it. Washington. Yeah. yeah. So Chen is off the board now, which is fine, but he was just a small part of a very deep class of safeties. Cornerback. Uh, I know I saw, I saw people, pe a couple of people clamoring for Stefan Gilmore to come back. Wouldn't hate it. I'll be honest. I don't think it happens, but Steven Nelson makes a ton of sense. That's a guy that can move around. I, I know you want to get your socks rocked off with Rocky sin. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, be a that's a little, that's a little much there, Jake. <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like it's been a couple episodes since I've thrown anything out there. So you're welcome. Everybody. <laughs> okay. Kendall Fuller is probably another one as well, but no, there's, there's still plenty of guys out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, when I'm looking at safety, I mean, look, again, you can go strong safety. You can go with a guy like Jamal Adams. Like I know he's a little bit of a head case and maybe a little bit too uh, chronically. Personally, I'd rather, I'd, I'd, as a member of the media, I'd super rather not. Yeah, but. I'd rather not go with Jamal Adams, especially as someone who who tweets too much during football games. I I, I feel like I'd be attacked. Uh, but you could go with his former running mate and Quadre Diggs, a very very good player. Uh, you could go Justin Simmons. You want more of a free safety over the top. Uh, and that's your top name out there right now. Cam Curl, I think, would be a fantastic add. Uh, Jordan Fuller, Jordan Whitehead, uh, both kind of versatile safeties that go back and forth. Uh, one of your favorite guys from draft, from your times covering the draft, Ashton Davis, I think would be a really good add as well. Like there, there's Thank a lot of so good safeties. 
<laughs> there's a lot of good safeties out there. Uh, and, and I still think that there's time for the Colts to get in on the safety market. So, you know, I, like I, I get it. Look, Xavier McKinney would have been a great ad, maybe not at 20 yeah. million a year or whatever. That's, he got. Yeah. That's a lot of coin for Chris yeah, Teller to got, drop he, up on a safety. Yeah. He got close to 20 million a year. It kind of ended up being like the Landon Collins deal a couple years ago that he missed out on. But uh, when I'm looking at these safeties, I still think there's a lot of guys who improve that secondary. Like again, like a, like a guy like a Cam Curl or a Quadre Diggs or mm-hmm. uh, Jordan Whitehead drastically improves what the safety room looked like last year, and especially mm-hmm. if you can get back a guy like Julian Blackman on uh, the same goes for corner as well. If you can get a Kendall Fuller in here, you can get in an Akella Witherspoon, a Stefan Gilmore, Steven Nelson, Rocky sin. Like those guys are upgrades over your Daryl Baker juniors and stuff, or maybe even just take a shot on a Michael Davis and then draft someone like Quinion Mitchell in round one. Like you have a lot of a- avenues to still improve this team. It's not all doom and gloom right now. Uh, so I-, I think when you look at what the Colts' biggest needs are right now, it's corner and safety, and then maybe adding another playmaker at wide receiver in the draft. There are still avenues to approach that. This is a really loaded wide receiver class uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to the draft. This is still a very good safety and cornerback free agency class, and those avenues are still there for the Colts. Now we can get doom and gloom when these avenues are taken away, but as of right now, these avenues are still there. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think it's smart to add capable players now. So when you get to the draft, you haven't missed on anything. And then if you add anything, it's a cherry on top and you get a, a younger, perhaps better version of what you added uh, in free agency. And you you bought a little time to allow that player to, to, to develop. So I'm right. definitely good with that. And there, there's also... Other free agents that are around, maybe not at positions of supreme need, but still would be nice to add and add add pretty quality depth. Still looking at quarterback, of course. Um, we are already kind of poo-pooed the Justin Fields thing, um, but there's Tyler Huntley. Now that Tyrod Taylor pour one out, he is not on the board anymore. How, how disappointed were you in that one? I was a little upset. That was more of just like 10-year-old Zach being upset, though. I grew I up like watching that- Tyrod. I don't want to say it was a certainty, but I was like, it's almost like last year where you're like, okay, well, obviously Gardner is going to come to the Colts whenever that, whenever free agency starts. It's kind of how I felt about Tyrod this year. And I was like, oh, wait, what? He's not. Yeah. Gonna, okay. Whatever. Yeah. I think, I think a big thing and why we saw the Colts kind of miss out on a lot of these free agents early is they're waiting on their in-house guys to get back on their offers because a mm. lot of their cap space came down to what kind of offer their in-house guys were going to take. And again, yeah. like we said at the top of the show, if you lose a Kenny or lose a Grover or lose a Pittman Jr., I know they weren't going to lose Pittman, but you know, if you're going to lose any of those guys, it drastically changes on how you approach free agency and what positions you're going after. So you have to get what those guys you have to get back with those guys first before you go outside and take other free agents. Um, and it, you know, maybe they should have responded before the tampering period i don't like whatever like whatever you want to get upset about here but you know they got what they wanted from those guys now they can properly turn their attention to outside free agents and and look at you know quarterbacks like tyler huntley who are still out there josh dobbs who's still out there you can look at you know other waivers that you want to take like isaiah simmons is out there a really athletic linebacker Mm -hmm. who can play some will backer for you and do that ronnie harrison uh, role there you can look at Quentin Jefferson I mean he's out there it's kind of you know Quentin Jefferson's out there I mean that's crazy you have a problem <laughs> <laughs> you can you can get a, a really cool Colts reunion with Jerry Hughes or Mark Lewinsky like we can get all these guys back we can have fun there's still time let's get you know? weird <laughs> let's get weird with it yeah uh, you already made it weird Jake here in this last segment anyway so we're just gonna keep going weird with it let's get let's get Jerry Hughes back just for the fun of it now I have to do at least one weird thing in every episode <laughs> here on out. Comment, everybody, what's the weird thing I've got to do in each oh, episode God, no. from here on the week? Oh, God, no. All right, guys. I think that's all I we have I said we're today. trying to spice up the comments tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're two old men who are up past our bedtime, guys. So we appreciate you joining us for this uh, late night stream here, all you guys on YouTube, uh, who, again, in the comment section, you guys are being very cordial, very nice. It was a much better comment section than expected. Even the people who are against Ballard, I do appreciate your guys' comments in there. I uh, love all you everydayers. And before we go, I do want to remind you guys that the Indie Draft Guides 
pre-orders are still open. For $8.99 with code DRAFTMIS, you get access to an essential piece of reading for Colts fans, both before and after the draft, ex- including 225 in-depth scouting reports, features, and much more. Click the link in the show notes to pre-order today. And if you guys don't already, make sure you're following at Locked on Colts at Jake Arthur and found at Zach Kicks 2 all on Twitter. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube where we listen to your podcast. We love your guys' rings, reviews, and we'll see you guys back here, not bright and early, probably late tomorrow night.